Hey, welcome back. So let's see uh, how this differential signal is used in CAN communication. So as I said, transceiver produces differential signals, CAN high and CAN low. And remember that these are complementary signals and CAN L is actually complementary signal of CAN H. Now let's understand this with an example. Now let's say you want to transmit logical one. So when you want to transmit logical one, so what transceiver does is, it will make the CAN high signal as 2.5 volt. It's a nominal voltage, okay? It need not be 2.5 volt. Okay, it may be something uh, else like 2 volt or 2.3 volt, etc. Okay, so later I will show you by going through the data sheet of the transceiver to understand uh, these numbers, okay? Now, if you want to transmit logical one, then can high will be 2.5 volt and can low also will be 2.5 volt so the difference between these two signals will be zero volt isn't it so that is why the logical one is also called as a recessive state of the can bus so if you want to transmit logic one so this will be the state of the can h and can l signals on the bus okay the difference will be zero now let's say you want to transmit logic zero so when you want to transmit logic zero can high will be at 3.5 volt or whatever the voltage you apply to the transceiver okay so basically i call it as plus vcc and can low will be approximately near 70 percent of the vcc or you can say 1.5 volt okay so the difference is approximately 2 volt and this state of the can high is called as dominant state so can state will be dominant if you want to transmit logic 0 remember and if you want to transmit logic 1 then can bus status will be or state will be recessive so this is a recessive this is dominant so dominant is used to transmit logic 0 and recessive state is used to transmit logic 1. I hope you get that idea. So now what we'll do is we'll go to the data sheet of the transceiver. Okay, so let me take you to the data sheet of the TI's SN65XX uh, CAN transceiver. Okay, so this transceiver I have considered because I'm going to use this transceiver in my application and uh, while doing uh, some code exercises and uh, as uh, as the description says here uh, this is actually used in applications employing the control area network serial communication physical layer in accordance with the ISO standard okay and uh, so as a CAN transceiver the device provides transmit and receive capability between the differential CAN bus and CAN controller with signaling rates up to 1 Mbps now let's just browse through this uh, document and here you will see that this is a functional diagram of the transceiver and here you can see that it gives out can h and can l differential signals those are the outputs and the input is d and r okay so d means driver input remember and r means a receiver output so this is output which will then goes to CAN RX and the CAN TX of your microcontroller you have to connect to the pin B and uh, here you can see that this block is actually transmitter and this is actually receiver and uh, here you can see that CAN L is produced by negating the output of CAN H isn't it so here you can see that here because here there is a not symbol isn't it so that means can l will be complementary of can h okay and you can also see that can h and can signals are then looped back to this engine and that's how the reception takes place that also means that whatever you transmit is also sensed by the receiver engine of the transceiver so that you should understand here okay so whatever you transmit here that will also will be looped back to the receiver block right 
so that you can see here. Great, so if D is equal to 1, then what happens? Can H and can L will go to recessive state. And if D is equal to 0, then can H and can L will go to the dominant state. So please remember that. And now let's browse through this document. So, so there are lots of uh, details. You can uh, go through this. Uh, I don't want to touch uh, all the tables here. I would like to take you to one more table here so which is this one okay so driver electrical characteristics so just take a look into this uh, row okay here so bus output voltage dominant so dominant means what as I said D is equal to 0 isn't it so when D is equal to 0 can H will be VCC and can low will not be equal to minus VCC but it will be equal to 1.25 volt slightly less suppose if you supply VCC as 3.3 volt to this uh, uh, transceiver then 3.3 volt minus 1.25 so that is roughly 2 volt so that is the dominant state great and bus output voltage recessive means you have to supply d is equal to 1 so d is equal to 1 is considered as 3 volt okay and can h will be 2.3 volt and can l also will be at 2.3 volt so the difference will be 0 volt so that's what we call as the recessive state okay so now hope you get the idea so so that means in our case if you apply let's say uh, if you apply 3.3 uh, volt to the transceiver and this state will be 3.3 volt during a uh, dominant state and this will be 1.25 volt okay not 1.5 volt because here it is because this data sheet says it is 1.25 volt okay and this will be 2.3 volt and 2.3 volt in the recessive state and remember that it's not like you should use this transceiver okay now there are lots of companies produce transceivers if you already have a transceiver which is produced by let's say NXP or some other vendor you can continue using that okay so the operation will be same so these voltage ranges may be different okay and remember that for this transceiver don't give more than 3.3 volt I'll show you later how to interface transceiver to the microcontroller great that's about the differential signals used in CAN protocol and the recessive and dominant state logic so recessive and dominant uh, these terminologies are used in CAN so the meaning of dominant uh, should be uh, in reference to something else isn't it so dominant over what so dominant over the recessive state so always logical zero is dominant over logical one because logical one always results in recessive state of the bus and logical zero always results in dominant state of the bus